It's uh, one of many times I've, I've heard the Premier speak and uh, she's always brilliant uh, and always on topic and tonight uh, was no exception. I really, really enjoyed it. And before I start, I want to set out the moral of this story from my perspective so that you can judge for yourselves how it applies to everything that follows. The moral for me is that leaders are not born. Leaders are made every single day in everything that we do in our lives, in every experience that we have, men or women, from the time that we are born. Those experiences, those things that impact our life is what will inform who we are, will define our values, and will provide the skills and the perspective that we have to provide leadership in our communities. So the perennial question is not how can we find more women leaders, because we are all leaders in our community. The question is, how can we ensure that more women choose to take leadership roles? Now, I think that it's a tremendously positive sign that we as Canadians and Albertans are all asking that question. Canadians recognize that we have to shrink that gap that we have to ensure that there is stronger representation of women in leadership roles. Because when any group is unable to have their voice heard in the public square, the democratic system loses out. And one of the things that I've certainly experienced in my life, which I'll talk about a little bit later, and I've certainly experienced since I became an MLA, running for leader of my party and becoming premier, is that there are perspectives in our community, experiences in our community that are only experienced by women because of the unique work that they do as mothers, as volunteers, perhaps in not-for-profit agencies across this province. And those voices need to be at the table when we make decisions. Now, many people make generalizations, which I don't like to make, but those generalizations are that women have a unique perspective that they have a set of skills that defines Canadian public policy differently. I would suggest that many people have unique perspectives and many people have those skills. But I would say, from my perspective, that there are many women leaders who have a different experience that they can bring to the table than perhaps some of our male colleagues. And if the public and the private sector are truly to reflect our nation, then those voices must be present at the decision-making tables. Now, there's lots of ways to address these issues. We can talk about women leaders. We can train women leaders. Our challenge is to provide women and young girls with the ability to exercise leadership. So we have to think in terms of supporting women in all of their aspirations and goals, even when they're young women. But ultimately, all women will choose for themselves what those aspirations will be and what those amb ambitions will be for themselves. You know, it is true that there are six premiers across this country that are women. And I had the opportunity about a week and a half ago to meet with the Premier of Ontario, Premier Wynne. And she said, well, this is great. You know, we're going to come to the table as premiers. And because we're women, we're going to be able to get things done. Oh, OK. My perspective is that there are leaders who are men and women at that table of premiers who come with a perspective to get things done. And it's important for us to not segregate or to make assumptions. Um, I have to say that, as you know, there are some female leaders in our country just at the moment who perhaps don't agree on things like the Enbridge pipeline. <laughs> and the fact is, we're both women. <laughs> So while we celebrate our common values, we also have to respect the fact that those unique experiences do give many of us different perspectives. 